Hey everybody, welcome to the Ralph Graves Jr. Show. I'm so happy that you guys decided to check out the show again. Um, I'm excited as my guest today. My guest today is recording artist Jeffrey Morell. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We're just going to yeah. be talking about all things. We're going to get into music. We're going to be talking about mindset. We're going to be talking about culture of today. Jeffrey Morell, man, welcome. <laughs> welcome thank to the you. Ralph Graves Thank Jr. you, thank show. you, thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I've been loving what I've been seeing you do, man. So yeah. I'm honored to be here, man. Man, listen, I, I just think I was able to get you, man. I mean, you're, you know, um, I guess this is my time to get you because you're always on the road, man. Quar quarantine, everybody's available right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, you know, so good for me, you know, good, right, good for right, me. Right. But uh, I'm just so glad to be able to get you on, man. So how you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. I am doing yeah. well. I am surprisingly enjoying this downtime. Yeah. I mean, literally, this is the most I've been home in 15 yeah. years, bro. Wow. I haven't been home this long a stretch well, of time. Well, let's let's talk about that. That's how'd you get into the how'd you get into the, I know how you got into the music biz has become a, a a much sought after recording artist. Tell tell the listeners and viewers, man, how you got into it and and uh talk yeah. about your well, journey, man. Well, man, you know, like most people, I started at the early, early age of five years old singing in the church. Um, you know, I, I was where, there. I was you there. You were there. You were there the whole <laughs> time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Then, I, you know, through my formative years, did the boys' choirs and, the, you know, the high school elite choirs and that sort of thing. And sure. as I graduated high school, I went to, uh, I went to a recording arts program um, for about 10 or 11 months. Okay. And learned the, the technical side of things, okay. uh, the recording engineering side. Uh, and then I decided at that moment, what I always knew was my love is in front of the board. You know what I mean? Right. It's not necessarily behind it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was, it was, it was eye-opening. It was really, really good for me to do, uh, to gain an understanding of where things were going. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just started, you know, um, doing a lot of shows locally, uh, open mics. Man, I, it's so funny, man. I don't know how artists, I mean, artists today have the, they have the YouTubes and the IGs and the, all yeah. those things. But yeah. we didn't have that, man, in, in 98. And, you know, we didn't have it. <laughs> we just had, yo, it's a dope open mic. And so what's interesting, uh, I, I used to do this open mic uh, in uh -huh. Philly, and it was on Mondays. And each Monday was a different night. So it was like poetry on one Monday, right. R&B on the next gospel on the next and maybe comedy on the next so right. at that time i was i was mainly doing gospel what was what was the name of the place warm day warm day, warm day. Warm day. so i'm gonna okay. tell you how this really ties in right okay so it's the original warm daddies on front and market street not right the location where they are now right um at that time like i said i started doing a show and i would pick one of my records that was sort of it was inspirational r b so it could it could hit in any crowd now I tell, tell our thing. listeners what warm daddies he's talking about is in philadelphia you philadelphia. know I know you guys are listening all over the globe but yeah. but we are south jersey philly philly south raised jersey and philly you know so, so warm okay. daddies is like your local uh soul food supper club live music yeah. venue um and you know to, to date i have a, a maybe a 15 year long-standing relationship with this venue i'll get into a little right. bit of that later yeah. but you know so i started going man and each week i would go and just get up and do my thing and i started to build relationships how build did relationships. that feel how, like because it was an it's an amateur it was an amateur setting absolutely talk talk about talk about your if you can remember your First time, now you had been singing because you've been singing in church forever, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was there, but yeah, yeah. And so your your nervousness may not have been as as much as before as as someone else who's never sang in those venues. So your first time stepping on stage at Warm Daddy's, what's going through young Jeff Morell's <laughs> mind? What's going through his head? Nervous out of my mind, right? <laughs> so here, so here's the thing: for all those years, I had been used to singing in front of a choir, right? With support. Yeah. When you're out there by yourself, man, it's just you. <laughs> you can't lean on anybody else. It's just you and you alone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I knew something early on. I knew that what God had given me was special. Yeah. I knew that. And that was able to overcome the nerves. If you right. get me, if you put me in front, and I still keep that mentality today. If yeah. you put me in front of a crowd, I'm going to give 110% like it's my last yeah. time. 
I think they call I think they call that red light. Um, I, I heard where, where Gilbert God Gilbert Godfrey. You remember Gilbert Godfrey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The actor, they yeah. say that off camera, he's an introvert. He's late. Mm -hmm. He's almost shy, like crazy shy. Yeah. But it's called it's called red light syndrome or red light. Like soon as that light hits him, you turn it on. It's a he switch. Turns it on, man. It's, and and yeah. look, it's so crazy. Yeah. You know, now I probably do. 70 to 80 shows a year, some, yeah. somewhere around that. So, yeah. you know, think about the travel, the tired, all the sick, all the stuff. Yeah. When you have to fight through all of that, it's yeah. really a mentality. I yeah. literally, there are times I'm like, you know, I have to command my voice to do what I want it to do because my body just is not, it's not there. Yeah. But you know, yeah. at this point in the game, man, I, I try to do the best I can to take care of my vocal health. Well, yeah, uh, so and we're gonna talk. We're check. definitely gonna talk about that. So, so young Jeff Morrell steps on stage. He steps says, "This stage. is it. This, this is, is going to make it. me or break me." And, and just sing, man. It's just go sing. time. And yeah, it's yeah. go time. And, and so I, after, I after that, 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 what happened? What happened? So, so after that, like I said, I started building relationships with some of the people there. People yeah. didn't know me. They just started like, "Yo, man, you can really sing." And, and then you I just kept it. going back. You just every you just week, persevering. Every week, every week. That was. And that's how I developed those relationships. Then shortly thereafter, um, I got a call. It was probably at one of those shows that there was an open audition uh, to do background vocals for okay. Music Soul Child. So, wow, wow. Um, yeah. I, was I still in high school? I had just graduated high school. Okay. And um, I remember that the drummer, uh, a drummer friend of mine, his brother was the MD. Okay. And he's like, yo, man, like, it's an opportunity if you're interested. M M MD, is that microphone doctor? Nah, musical director. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 just, just make sure. I, I okay. know some microphone doctors. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I went and I, I go do the audition. Uh, right. And it's so funny, man, because I'm in the audition. Here I am, little church boy from, from Magnolia, New Jersey. And yeah. uh, people are just starting to know who I am. Yeah. And everybody I'm hearing, uh, yeah, man, I did this tour with such and such and such and such. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of green. I, I've never been out on the road at this point yeah. um, with an artist. I go, kill the audition, end up getting the job. Um, and then that was the start of it, man, just building wow. those relationships with people. Wow. Um, so you that, got the job with Music Soul Child? Got the job with Music Soul Child, did that for a couple months. How, how was, old are you at that time? I was, that was two, that was right before 9-11. So at that point I had to be 20... 20 getting ready to turn 21. So you're, you're not even 21 and you're on the road even, with, with this, with this award winning, yeah. uh, uh, singer, man. And, and you yeah. got, you had the chops to be in the background. I had the chops to be in the background. It was an amazing eye opening experience, man. And, yeah. um, yeah. You know, I, I appreciated it for what it was. Right. Right. And then, and, you know, moved on to, to, uh, I did some work for Glenn Jones. Okay. I actually moved on to putting together a band for him and okay. then, you know, other artists and Nesby, a lot of studio stuff. Right. Uh, but then in the process, I decided, I was like, man, let me put out some music. Let's, yeah. let's, let's put out some records and, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, literally selling CDs out of the trunk of my car, man. And it, CDs. You know, CDs, right. CDs. Right. When's the, when's the last time you seen a CD player? I don't know. <laughs> I can't. His, his, was, his was really crazy. I have 150 I'm, CDs. I don't have anything to play with. I'm in my garage the other day because, oddly enough, this young lady reaches out to me. He's like, I need one of your last gospel albums that's not, uh, it is digital, but she didn't have, it's the only service that this particular album is on title. It's not on title. It's on everywhere wow. else. Wow. So she calls me, she's like, I need that. Like for months and months, I was like, yeah, let me check my garage. So I check and check <laughs> and I can't find it. I find a stack of CDs and I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to check what this is? Because I have no idea where it's right. there is. Right. My yeah. cars don't have it. It's like, what None is of them. It? No. You know? So I don't even know how to check them. And I can't even find, you know what? I do have, I do have an old CD player in my little, little red box. Okay. CD player, I'll get it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get it to you. No, no so, rush, because I'm not uh, in a rush. <laughs> so, so what we're learning is is that this journey, man, and I'm, and I'm glad you're sharing it with with the viewers and the listeners, is perseverance. So here you are, this young cat, you've been a long time. You you've worked at it, and I, and I want people to understand that 
oh, success man. comes after work. And and that was only the beginning. Before this interview is over, man, folks got to know. I mean, I, I know where you're at. I know what you're doing. I know what yeah. you have done, man. And, and it's just yeah. phenomenal. But I wanted to pause on that perseverance piece yeah. I, um, that, that you, you have to put in the work. And, and like you said, good days, bad days, stomach hurt, headaches, uh, tragedies, oh, whatever the case may be, I still have to get up here and do the I work. I got to do the work. Like I have to put everything that's going on in my life on hold for yeah. that 60, for that 90 minutes or however long I'm standing before people because yeah. people have paid their money. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. value that. I mean, it's the yeah. most beautiful thing in the world to wake up and do what you love to do and somebody pay you for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think of the years, you know, the, the sort of the cutting your teeth years where you're, you're grinding, you're trying to, to get to a point where, you are bankable where you are, you know, people call with the expectation that this is going to cost me some money. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. those things, man, I mean, years and years of not getting paid and years and yeah. years of doing things on the strength till you realize like what I have now yeah. is marketable and it's something that people want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I tell you what you do, you, you do more, um, you, you give the audience the Jeff Morrell experience. It's, oh, right. it's, you just don't entertain. I, I can be entertained by a, a monkey in a tin cup. Yeah, yeah. When someone comes to see one of your shows or any other show that you're involved in, mm -hmm. it's a legit experience. And, and man, like I said, have, having been uh, your, your big brother from the time you were been oh, on this man. planet, which has been, yeah, man. We, we've been, we've been rocking for it. Bro, hold up, Ralph. I'm about to be 40 in a couple, in two weeks, bro. Man, I, I've been knowing Sheesh. you for, what, 38 years? Easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Well, but, yeah. but, you know, but you still give me that experience. It's, and, and oh. so how, how did you learn that? How did you move from performing to really delivering an experience to live audiences? And it does even show through in, in your music. Through, yeah. through, through the music that we buy digitally now. So how did you move from just performing to really delivering the experience that you deliver, man? It's, it's time on the stage. And there's no, nothing or nobody that can you, can, you can do a show, right? You can choreograph yeah. the entire show. You can have what you're going to say. Nothing beats that in the moment time. Yeah. Because audiences are unpredictable. Right. You're going to have good audiences. You're going to have audiences that are going to pull on you so much that yeah. you have to work harder. Right. But when you, when you go with that mindset that, yo, I'm not going to lose one person in this audience. It right. is my job from the time I step on that stage to command your attention. Yeah. Yeah. If I do what yeah. I, if I do what I'm supposed to do in the first 30 seconds, the right. rest of the show is smooth sail. Yeah, it, it's you know like saying? that. It's like that with with motivational speaking. Yeah, man. I, I have about three minutes to 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 get you. I got about three you gotta, minutes. You got to grab them, but once you yeah. got them, you can now let me take you on a journey. Right. And yeah. That journey yeah. can be a journey of love, passion, of sadness, all these yeah. different emotions. But it's my job to conduct you and to lead you through that experience. Because we we come into it. We we come into it, man. When people come see us, when people come see you sing, um, hear me speak, or they go to a comedy show, we're mm -hmm. we're bringing our separate emotions. We're bringing all kinds of experiences, and, and we're bringing all kinds of different backgrounds. And here we are waiting for you to collectively take us on this journey. Where That's I might journey. I might show up sad, right? But it, it might be a ballad or something you sang that really explained how my heart felt. Yeah. I might show up happy. It might be something you sang upbeat, something that kind of took me over the top, man. I, I, I've had the misfortune of, I ain't going to say misfortune because it was your show. It's, you know, you put on the great shows. I've watched mm -hmm. some folks open for you that, you know, could sing. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it wasn't, and I get it. it. They were young. You know, they made, when I say young, they were young in the business, but it really wasn't an experience, man. Yeah. It's, you know, for as much as I, I feel like it is my duty to do as much as I can to bring other young artists up as much as there are other artists that I still look to at this point right, right. to get to the next level where I'm heading. I mean, you always have to have somebody that is where you're heading so you can see how to navigate it. You know what I'm Who's saying? your inspiration? Ah, oh, man. I, so when it comes to, to, to vocals, yeah. I, uh, Luther Vandross, man. Yeah. Uh, I got a chance to stand 
probably 15 feet away from him backstage wow. and watch him perform at the Lear Court, not at the Wells Fargo Center at the time, the big stadium. That, that's also in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. <laughs> um, which was dope experience because I was the invited guest at that point of Boys to Men. So that that alone, like I'm already on a high. Who gets right. to see this, right? Right, right. And I watched him literally take 40, 50,000 people wow. and take them on a journey. How does he do that? How, you know, and so I guess that's how you learned it. That's how you, you watched him oh, man. operate. You, you watch what works for you. I think yeah. the thing is, right, so I've learned and, I, and I, I have to give this, this piece of advice I learned from uh, Donald Lawrence. He okay. said this to me. He said, you know, he said, people, they like what they see. Mm -hmm. They like what they hear. Right. But they love what they feel. He's got that right. Yeah. If I can give you yeah. an emotion, yeah. whether it's something I sang or something I did that brought you back to maybe your first kiss with your wife or your right. first date or right. a time when you, you like were struggling and you know yeah. somebody did something for you. Those things resonate with people. Yeah. And they're also the things that allow people, make people want to support you more. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to show your personality, who you are. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm, it's I'm just not being Jeffrey. Anybody. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Just, just being a different version, a more collective, collected, not so wild, <laughs> not so loose cannon version of myself. <laughs> you know, you know because just, uh, uh, God created us with, with the superpower of being ourselves. Yeah. Yep. That, because nobody can do Jeffrey Morrell like that Jeffrey Morrell. Nobody. Nobody. And, and that, that's awesome that you got a, got a chance to watch an, um, an ultimate professional like Luther Vandross, man. I mean, yeah. you know, what am I, I, I tell you what, man, there are, there are guys and women that when they open their mouths and sing, man, they do take you on that journey. I, I'm a, I'm an oh, old yeah. school guy, but I do like some of the, some of the new cats. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to hit them, but just as you get older, your, your taste and I listen to everything, a very eclectic taste. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, your now, taste I was does, listening does change. Yeah. Bro, I was listening to Billy Joel this morning, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one of my favorite voices. He really yeah. is. And, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I was listening to, but go ahead. Tell me about Billy Joel. Go ahead. You know, so it's just like you, you, you pull, I pull from everybody. Yeah. There's not a person that I'm around that is a singer that I'm not able to say, oh man, that's okay. Let me, yeah. let me do that. And let me do it the way that Jeff Morrell would do it. Yeah. So you, know you can learn saying? something from anybody. Yeah. Any and everybody. Because here's the thing, we're not reinventing the wheel. They didn't reinvent the wheel. They yeah, learned they that from somebody and they put this spin on. Um, you know, I, I listen to El John, man. You know, oh, nice. I, people I probably wouldn't even think that. Billy Joel, yeah. yeah, I listen to Billy Joel. But I was listening to, um, and you, this will, you'll be like, what? I was listening to the Eagles, man. The Eagles is one of my ah. bands, man. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're one of my bands, man. Let's go. Let's go. You know, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I pulled from, from all over the place. Um, but lately, and, and I went to see this guy, and I think I told you about it, man. I went to see Greg Porter. Me and my wife went to see Greg Porter. Brother. Man. Let me, let me tell the, the, the viewers out there, if you don't know who Greg Porter is, yeah. after, you, after you buy all, all Jeffrey Morrell stuff, mm -hmm. go, on go and check download. out. Yeah, we download. send that home. Go on and download. Stream. Yeah. Stream it right now. <laughs> Greg Porter, man. Be Amazing. good. I mean, just, just Amazing. all kinds of stuff, man. We went to see him. And um, we had to see him at, um, what's that place over there uh, in Philadelphia? Uh, the Kimmel Center. The Kimmel Center, right. Kimmel we Center. see him at, at the Kimmel. Yeah. And he did a really good job, man. But um, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm in that lane with that yeah, type music at, at my age. And I still, I still, when I work out, man, you know, I still, still hip hop. I'm still Busta yeah. Rhymes and all them guys. Yeah, you know, with that? But, uh, <laughs> As you mature, like you said, your taste matures. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The things yeah. that you listen yeah. to. Gregory Porter, we, um, I was on a show with him in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And I remember uh, at the time, I didn't know much about, I knew he was a big deal, but I didn't right. know much about him personally. Right. right. And I watched backstage and I watched this man open up his voice with a three piece, no singers, nothing. Him, wow. a bass player, right. That's keyboard player, yeah. and a drummer. Right. And I think he might have had a saxophone player. A, a saxophone and uh, but a piano. A sax, right. Or, or, a sax an player. organ. An organ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an right. organ guy. Yeah. And this dude, man, his voice was yeah. Yeah. smooth as silk, man. I was like, yeah. 
Well, when you guys, I mean, you guys really have it, man, like that. And, and of course, man, another one of my big favorites, you know, I'm going to say, because he's a friend of ours, man, yeah. Eric, Eric yeah. Roberson, man. I mean, that's, that's my guy, man. I mean, you, you, you three guys are my top male vocalists today. There's oh, Jeff Morrell, Greg Porter, Eric Roberson. And, and uh, now, I'm not saying, listen, if we weren't as close as we were, I would still right. tell you the same thing, man, because you have a way. Give me, just, just, just because we're talking about it, man, your top female vocalist, whether we heard of them or not. <sighs> top female vocalist. Okay, so on the gospel side, I'm, I'm a huge Kim Burrell fan. Yes. But um, what is that girl's name? Just her name, just, uh, she was a Sunday best winner. What the heck is her name? Leandria Johnson. Okay. All Leandria right. Johnson. I can listen to her sing anything, any wow. and everything, man. Wow. Leandria. Wow. Uh, but I got a ton of friends, man, that are so there's like Lauren Talese. Yeah. She's a jazz artist. Yeah. Um, good, good friend of mine. Amazing right. singer, amazing performer. Um, right now, who am I listening to? I'm listening to so there's no secret. I, I was a huge, huge Boys to Men fan. So Sean right. Stockman from Boys to Men put out an album. Yeah, I, I just, you know what, believe it or not, I heard one oh. song from it yesterday on, on, uh, I got Sirius XM. I just mentioned their name. They ain't paying Check, me, but they better start paying me. Right, right. Check out yeah. Breathing, Breathing okay. by Sean. It is okay. the, it's so well written. It's just, it's a conversation. I like songs that are stories. Tell me right. something. Right. Take me on a journey. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, yeah, so I would have to say probably like Leandria, I'm listening to. Okay. I'm listening to this cat named Lucky Day right now too. If you're yeah. not up on him, he's he's pretty dope. Okay. Uh, but I'm I'm in the lab right now, man. So. I'm well, where really does inspiration to... come from? Where does inspiration come from to write, man? Because you're a phenomenal lyricist, man. Life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> life. How do they yeah. say art imitates life? I mean, it yeah. really is is true. I mean, you you have to have experiences. Yeah. To to craft something genuine. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, we're, we're, a lot of us are concept writers. I'm a concept writer too. I can take a situation and something mm -hmm. can inspire me and I can say, okay, let me write about this. Yeah. Um, but really I pull from my own experiences and mm -hmm. with things I've, that people around me that have gone through, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know? So, so sometimes you have to go to that place. Sometimes you gotta listen, go to that place of a broken heart. The, the, Beauty about being an artist, right? Mm -hmm. And this is any kind of artist, is you have to be willing to be vulnerable. Yeah, okay. Vulnerable enough to know it's not perfect, but maybe the feeling is there. You know what I'm saying? I get you. I get it's you. the same thing every time a speaker or a preacher, anybody steps in front of a crowd, you yeah. are judged from the moment you step in front of the crowd. Yeah. Why you got that title? Why those, those shoes don't look? Right. You right. know what I mean? You're battling all of those really insignificant things. Yeah. So that you can break through to grab somebody's attention. But yeah. being vulnerable enough to know um, that I got to pour my heart into this record, yeah. which means I might have to go to a place that was kind of dark. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I can pull that emotion out. And then you put everything in it and then, and then, it, then people don't like it. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know? So you, you almost have to have, I really don't care. Like, I love right. me. This yeah. is me doing me. And yeah. I hope that you enjoy it. Yeah. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, man, how, how, you know, because of this pandemic, because of, of where, we're, where we're at right now, yeah. culturally, um, we, we've watched the, 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 the murder of, of um, George Floyd, mm -hmm. man. We, you know, mm -hmm. America has said uh, enough is enough. At least Amen. black America has. Amen. I'm a retired police officer. You know, Amen. even, even my, my, my group of retired police officers, enough is enough. Enough you know, is enough. It seems like we don't, we're living without leadership. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of, of, of Marvin Gaye, you know, uh, yeah. he, he just, he wrote all, all kinds of songs during that particular time. But anyway, how, how, during all of this, during this pandemic and during how people move, how has the music game just changed from January 2020 <laughs> To where we are because like you said you were touring everywhere so not oh, only man. and this is oh. my this is just me talking not only mm -hmm. are you not touring because of the pandemic couldn't tour now anyway because of the civil unrest yeah you know so yeah. how has it and i know you're still in the lab so so how are you guys still collaborating how are you still getting your what, what do you how's it changed 
Well, I mean, it's, it's changed drastically. I mean, uh, from the financial standpoint, you, you think that there are, just imagine, my calendar was full. My calendar yeah. was full. From, so was mine. I had speak engagements everywhere. You know everywhere. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's, yeah. it's, it has some international stuff that got pulled off. And it's, it, the, the fiscal year is absolutely affected. But the thing is, you have to be creative enough to figure out, okay, and this is where we are now. Where, where, where is the income? Yeah. The money has not changed in terms of people having the money to spend. What's right, changed right, is right. their ability to spend it. Now the venue, a venue that seats 500 people because of social distancing is only seating 225 people or 200. So now when you chop the attendance down, Mm-hmm. Your expenses are still the same. Your flights, your hotel, right? Everything is the same. Right. Now you have to wrestle with: Do we double the ticket price? Which we can't really do because now people might not see the value worth being doubled. Right. Where do you make up that? So it becomes this: They're tr- we're trying to figure it out. That's what everybody how, in that place. How about this? You you have such a large following, and I mean we're not going out on Friday nights and Saturday nights, you know. Right. Um, you know, I, 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 what about a virtual concert? Everybody's been doing them. It's, it's, I mean, so, I mean, to where it's paid. What's it? Right. So that's the thing. Yeah. Now, so four months ago, before the pandemic, if somebody came on and did a virtual concert, hundreds of thousands of people will watch, right? Right. But now, not just music artists are sitting home, comedians are sitting home. Right. So everybody's, your, your attentions, are being pulled in 17 different directions. Like, I want to go see Tony Rock, or I want to go see Kevin Hart because he's doing 15 minutes, or I want to see this person, that person. And so the numbers are not holding as strong as they were because there are too many options. But I I did have the same options before. Well, I guess it's a little bit different because I don't have to travel to Chicago to see Tony Rock. You don't have to. I can see it right here from the Honeycomb High. Right from the crib. And then when I'm tired, of hearing him, let yeah. me flip on over and see what my homie Michael Collier is talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, it, it becomes this, this battle. I don't know where, it's, there is going to be a way. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we've seen it yet. I right. think that things that will eventually get back to um, the way they were to a degree, they have to, there are too many industries that depend on it. You have yeah. sports, you have music, you have uh, all kinds of live events. So. Mm-hmm we're in the figuring it out part of the stage. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? Yeah. I mean, initially I've had probably three streams of my income come to a halt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to figure it out. You got to be creative. I'm in a business that typically is feast or famine. I've been right. extremely blessed in the last right. five right. or six years. That right. we've been, it's been feasted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so you got to prepare for, slow times and i hope yeah. that you know a lot of my colleagues have you know put a little something up right. you know because yeah. you know it can get a little tight but i think we'll, we'll be back on the road okay. sometime i don't know i don't know if it's going to be this year well the nba not. started back up from what i understand they, they started back up I think smaller July venues and stuff. yeah and I, I think without fans so it yeah. becomes you know they have the, the television portion to monetize okay uh, so we'll see, man. We're, we're figuring it out. But uh, in the meantime, yeah. all we can do is do the thing that we love to do. The thing right. we would do right. without getting paid. Hey, man, tell my audience, man, where they can find your, your, your music, man, how they can download it or stream it or whatever they got to do. Where, where can they find all things Jeff Morrell? All things Jeff Morrell. All you, all you have to do to find me is to pick up your phone and Google my name. Go in mm-hmm. Apple Music, go in Tidal, go in Spotify, go in Amazon Music, anywhere that music is streamed. Mm-hmm. Type my name, Jeff, M-U-R-R-E-L-L. Right. And right. all of the projects that I've worked on um, and have been a part of are there. You can YouTube me, find me on IG at uh, Jeff Morrell Music, Jeff Morrell underscore music. Yeah. Facebook, same thing. I'm, I'm very, very easy. My digital footprint is 
it's pretty strong. You can find me. Just yeah, yeah. Go looking for me. <laughs> right, right. Now, if they email you, if they reach out to you, they drop something to DM. Will they? I, they'll, you'll get a. They'll get a response from you. They will get a response as long as it's nothing too crazy. I've, right. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting, man. The the things that pop up in those DMs. I can uh, imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I I manage my own social media to this point. Okay. I okay. Thought. So it's you. It's me. You. Right. So if you reach me, if you want to reach me. You can reach me. I manage some of my social media. I don't manage all of it. Yeah, sometimes I, yeah. I, I wrestle with that. Should I? Yeah. I'm so hands on. I'm the guy on my birthday that mm-hmm. will be spend three days trying to thank everybody for the happy birthdays, man. Because yeah, it's that I, personal touch. I used to be that guy. And it is. And I, I try <laughs> not to send out a big post and because I do love yeah. everybody. But, you know, um, yeah. I, I had to get somebody to handle it, man. Um, some not all of my social media. I, I still have access to it, yeah. but I had to get. I mean, I'm I, I I can't let the social media take away from me and my wife. You know what I'm saying? I feel that, bro. I, as much as I love what I do, I, Kevin Hart said this the other day on another program. He said that um, he found out that he was married before the accident. Mm-hmm. He was married to his career, but he was just dating his family. Wow. And he said, "No, that can't be." He can't said, be. "So now." He said, so he said, ever since the accident and the pandemic and all that stuff, he said, I'm home. He said, I'll work three weeks or I'll work uh, a month and tell everybody I'm not going out for another two months. Yeah. Y- you know, yeah. and so and so when you have family stuff, you learn to, to, to juggle it that way. Yeah, man. But, priorities, man. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but man, listen, you don't have that yet. <laughs> I don't have that yet. I don't have that yet. <laughs> you know, and I, keep traveling. I Hustle Keep hard. What you right doing now. again? Yeah. And so, man. guys, you can find him at all things Jeff Morrell. Google it. Yeah. You can find him on pot on um on uh, Spotify right here on Spotify. You can find him yeah. on everything else, and um, yeah. find him on Instagram. Tell us on Instagram again. It's uh, Jeff Morrell underscore music, and it's M U R R E L L. Real simple. Jeff Morrell underscore music. Jeff, if you had a final be- word for someone aspiring to do what you may not even be in music, but just mm-hmm. in life, just doing what they're doing, just just give me a, a final minute or two inspiring. What, what would you tell them? Just a, a mind. If you already don't know, find the thing that wakes you up with purpose. Wow. Find the yeah. thing that you're passionate about. Yeah. Dive into it, even if it seems impossible keep people around you who will feed that who will feed encourage you to do those things let me tell you something music has taken me around the world wow i've been to places that there's no reason i would have been from africa to australia to i mean for singing for presidents and dignitaries and all kind of other stuff doing what you i never thought i never saw it Wow. God had in store. All I knew is I love this gift and I love yeah. that God gave me a gift to share with people that made them happy, that gave them joy. Yeah. Find whatever it is you're passionate about, run towards it and figure out a way to monetize it. Man, thank you for saying that. And thank you for being on the Ralph Graves Jr. Yeah, show, man. Look, my you, pleasure, you, man. You know, man, you my, my little brother. You know, I love you, man. On, man. And 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 just thank you for being you. And, and thank you for sharing. And this won't be your last time. Will you come back again? Absolutely, man. I'll definitely come back, man. That's you know, you and I, we can rap for hours, man. You for know? hours. That's why I was like, let me get off this thing, man. I'm, you know what I mean? We got stuff to do tonight. But, man, listen, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, guys, you've been Happy watching man. the Ralph Graves Jr. show. I've been with recording artist Jeffrey Morrell get with him get with him yeah. share this with somebody share the YouTube channel share the the podcast share with somebody and uh, let's all grow together matter of fact let's all be unstoppable together if you have it go, go out there and get my book amazon.com Ralph Graves Jr.com where else is it Barnes and Noble.com that's right and let's all be unstoppable together that's thanks good. Jeff man I really You're appreciate welcome, you coming by man and, um, and and just hanging out with us for a little while man For sure. My pleasure, man. Y'all be good out there. Be safe. Yeah.